everyone. Hey, y'all. How are y'all doing on this beautiful day? Uh, <coughs> that was the first for me. Huh? Oh, your, stream, oh. your stream opened up with a, a commercial. <laughs> did it? Yeah, my, my end it did. That threw oh, me out no. a lot. I'm like, what is she playing? And I'm like, it's a commercial. <laughs> hey, but, Sam. Hello, everybody. Sam, Amy, I'm trying to catch up. I um, I need to go wash my hands. I'll go in just a second. Really, I need a cigarette first. Then I'll go wash my hands. Oh, Lord. It's just grease and stuff. We were working on the truck by sway bar links. That's what well, we noticed first. that one side didn't have a sway bar link. Open what? Yeah, I opened it. What thing? Oh, man. That maple was pretty good. I like the maple. Hey, Cool Gamer, how are you? Okay. Yes. I want to tell every single one of y'all, even the ones that's too afraid to come and chat, thank you very, very much for supporting me along my journey on YouTube. Um, I greatly appreciate y'all, and I hope that y'all come join us in chat soon. This is an 18 and up channel. If you watch, there's nothing yeah, I can do about one. it, but if you come in chat and you're a minor... Um, you, my mods will block you, but if you want to watch, you can watch. There's nothing I can do about that, but we do not allow uh -huh. minors to interact with us in our chats. There's nothing I can Thank do. Thank you, AR. I was just going to do that, but you got it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There's nothing I can do if, you. um, you watch my shorts. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. I appreciate y'all. Um, all of y'all, every single one of y'all for helping me get there. Oh, thank you, Brandon. My white vinyl glove. Well, I didn't have any gloves. That's why my hands are like this. I'll send you a couple of mine, okay? <laughs> <sighs> um, But I do. I appreciate y'all, and I love every single one of y'all. And don't, as long as you're 18 and over, don't be afraid to come and chat and say hi to us. Um, Get to know us. Let us get to know you. Um, we try to keep this the safest place possible. Um, and, you know, we we love with all our heart. That's just who we are. Until you screw us over, then you're then you're screwed. But other than that. But we're also adult. We are also all adults in here. And sometimes it is adult content. So you have to be 18 or over. Yes. Yes. You can't interact with us in chat unless you're 18 or over because we do talk adult things and that's just how and, it is and we don't, i mean and we don't want to do youtube jail it's not very clean mm -hmm. <laughs> so what happened was my kenny was sitting there he's been trying to tell me something's wrong with my truck he said something just ain't right i'm telling him he's full of shit it drives just fine for me well <laughs> He's sitting outside and he comes in. I was laying on the bed because my stomach was bothering me. He said, I got something to show you. I said, what? He said, come outside. And he said, I want you to sit in that chair and look under your truck and see what you see missing. So I sat there and I, I looked on each side. It was Kevin Perrin and I, because I could see up under it. And I was like, oh, hell. So it was a sway bar link on the up one side. Then we noticed the other side was broken and the bolt was missing. Like, I don't know how it's not done something on me already. Thank the Lord. But, um, yeah. Your guardian angel was under there running, holding that damn thing up. You better tell it. Yeah. Thank you. That's why I just say it. Thank the Lord. And his precious well, angel. Guardian my angel. guardian. I do have it. I believe my sister's my guardian angel. Well, I think she was under there running. You better get. You better tell her she gets a few days off. Overworked angels are not nice to deal with. You know that. <laughs> I'm eating a very late dinner. Oh, uh, a crock pot meatloaf, dude, to be done at nine o'clock. A, oh, well, a late dinner but... is what, like, if it's not there, 
like it makes your truck like I don't know how to explain it. Um, it keeps it from doing yeah. that. It keeps keep it like this, so it doesn't go like it sways, you know, without it. But without them, like I would be in the ditch, probably. Be like, it wouldn't have been a good outcome, steady. probably. <laughs> yeah. no. Oh, meatloaf is so good. Hey, Mr. Hey, J. Hey, Mr. J. How are you doing? <coughs> so, yeah. <sighs> so he ran and he got the parts. Luckily, he did get two. He's like, I got two. And luckily, he got two of them because he needed both of them. So that's what we were at. Uh, I'm not sure. Hang on. I know trucks do because we fixed the sway bar on one of my old trucks that I used to have. So I know trucks do, but I think cars, they should have a sway bar. It might be for larger vehicles like RVs and motor coaches. Yeah, it says not every vehicle has a sway bar, but they can be extremely useful, especially for large vehicles like RVs and other motor coaches. Oh. So. Who's whining? Uh, let's see. I almost was going to run in and grab here, grab here, grab y'all, bring y'all out there with us while we worked on it because I seen it was about to hit 815. I was like, I can't make it. So I, I was holding, you know, my phone flashlight too. So what I did, I just hurried up and got on, changed it to 830. And Lord Jesus, I made it by a minute. <laughs> But then it does say vehicles can be driven safely without a sway bar or with, with it disconnected. The vehicle does feel different while concerning, but it's not uncontrollable. Just take corners at legally posted speeds or lower and be careful changing lanes on the highway. And get the sucker fixed is what they're trying to say. So, but I can't believe someone no. used it at your work. Hold on. Wait, 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 Brendan. I'm sorry. I got lost. Can't believe someone used it. Use what? Uh, yeah, used what? <laughs> used what? Because <laughs> I'm lost. I'm going to have to ask to. Yes, we had to have them put on our truck to tow our camper years ago. Nick, would you wear one? I don't have any. They're at the junction. You threw them away, Sam. It's only me, okay? She had to throw them away. They're at the dump pile. We can't find them, so you'll just have to deal with me. I will get a second. Oh, one for they you found them. Not they right. found them at the junkyard. Oh, they yeah, they're holding friends with all the other vinyl gloves that got thrown away. Oh, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. But they're not alone, so yeah, that's good. They're not alone. Know. They're not alone. They're no. in good hands. Good hands. Well, good gloves anyway. They don't have hands in them. I <laughs> hope not. Ooh, that will be spooky. I'd be coming up there to investigate that. I'd come find out about that. Hey, that would be some weird shit, man. What if you put up at the junkyard and you seen? Never mind, because that's what they're doing. Um, what was that? What was that? Does it thing from the Adams family? Was it thing the hand that ran yes, the, and the thing? Up? Hey, that a bunch of things <laughs> Because the cousin thing is running around the, the junkyard pulling out the gloves and saying, No, they don't yeah, come. Yes. They stay here with me. Nick. They're all just running around. Hey, girl. <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah. And I didn't say all y'all's names individually, and I apologize. But hey to each and every one of y'all. What she said. <coughs> that one. That it was one. a rush. I can't wait to <laughs> I was running. Oh, my thumb goes wrong. We'll go that way. So I think we're going to throw pit uh, out Piggy. I'm getting Peggy and freaking Pumpkin's name mixed together. Yep, I got one on the way in. Okay, Chloe, how old are you, please? This is the 18 and you? up chat only. Oh, we got another Children, one. Children, right please see your too. way out. You. I, I tell I had this feeling. I had this feeling this was going to happen. White Hat, know what the word play means. If you know what play means, you have to leave the room. 
If you know what the, the word slay means, please exit name. by the left door. Oh, we can't tell. This one's got a dog picture. How do we figure it out? But they only have one subscriber, so do Your we assume users. they're young? Oh, AR got her anyway. I was just checking because I wasn't sure how to do that. <laughs> they had a dog picture. You can't tell how old somebody is by a dog picture. That's hard. Your user is Sam and Cody. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, well, that should have been a thing too. It did say Sam and Kobe. Where I, can't I guess see that, that was her dogs. It was Chloe, C H O L E, but A R got her oh. or him. See, it's hard to thank know. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, <laughs> I hard to know. Well, I went to look, but like I said, the dog picture threw me off. So I was like, do we wait or do we? I'm going to pan the pan in oh. here. Oh, okay. Well, that's why I said if they know the term for slay, they're out. <laughs> Because I didn't. I had no idea. <laughs> I neither. What the hell is slay? Slay means you done it like you just, you got it. You got it. Like you just done the darn thing. Okay. So I have planned for today that we are, I'm going to be playing an interview from Sweetie Pilo. It's just an interview of Chris from Chris. And I am looking for a, inter a good interview from the biological father. Um, I just want, I just wanted to go through it with y'all. I did ask her permission before I done it because I didn't want to be in trouble. I'm going to try to share it on here. If it knocks me down, then what are you doing? Wait, Peggy will still be here and I'll come right back. But <laughs> don't leave me alone with these guys. We get in trouble when we're left alone. <laughs> But let me pin on here before I do that. This is the 18 and up chat only. Um, you think that I really nothing? wish parents would start keeping a better eye well, on their youngins, kids, what they're most watching. Most these kids are home alone. They don't, they don't have supervision right now. This Sadly. is a 18 plus chat. If you come oh, in AR, take that back. Under age 18, you will be escorted out. That sounds so mean when I typed that in my head. I just felt mean as hell. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> okay. That's pinned at top. Okay. So now I'm going to go in. Okay. Please give me a minute. I've not done this in a long time. Oh, God. Oh, I got the hick burps. Ooh. Oh, Jesus. Is that the hitch keys? Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared I'm about to mess something up. I'm getting nervous as heck. Oh, I'll hold the fort down till you get back if I don't get kicked. But, you know. It, I don't think it kicks you. I think it just oh. kicks me. <laughs> me yeah, AR said you could have said that they'll be dragged by your ear out the door, but you didn't. So oh, you hey. I <laughs> should, should say that. Oh. Get pushed out, kicking and screaming. Ah, ah. But we want to come in. We want to see the chicken okay. pants. Lilith. Hey, Lilith. Okay, let me see. Troublemaker. <laughs> How do I find y'all back again? Yes, Lilith, she reached a thousand. So now we get ads when we come into yes. the show. Yes. <laughs> yes. Did it give a big one? Oh, I put good. the That's lowest good. ad thing because it gives you three choices low, medium, or high volumed ads. And I chose the lowest one because I was actually, damn it, Danny helped me. Well, I don't know what, I didn't know it was. what to pick. And 
Okay, so now I need to go in here. Yes, you, Miss Lilith. Ha ha, fool me what? Fool me what? Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. I'm on to you. <laughs> Let's see. Share screen where you at. I'll find you. And you won't like it. Are we going to go sideways now? What's that mean? Like we're going to go this way so the screen will share? I don't know. Let's see uh -oh. what happens. We go to the bottom. Woo, we made tiny. Uh, <laughs> it shrunk us. Oh, no. Honey, YouTube shrunk me. <laughs> Can y'all hear? It's not doing anything. It's a black screen. Um, let's see here. It's going to do this to me. Let me and go we're back. back. <laughs> micro windows. No, you, no you're, you're the accuser. <laughs> Share. We're back at the bottom and still a black screen. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> You doing her daddy helper? <laughs> I'm doing like I'm sharing. Lilith, it really, really happened. It's not a made up story. The lady did sit on the potty for two years and they came in and we had to take her to the hospital and have the toilet seat removed from her backside. But it's true. It was a true, true story. I wouldn't lie. It it really happened. Y'all can't hear it or anything? Uh-uh. It's just a blank screen with nothing. Brandon said, what device? I don't know what she's using, so I can't tell you. It's um a Chromebook. I know, but it happened. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it got to wrap it around it, honey. I'm sorry. Absolutely. And yes, two years. Mm. So all I can assume is he brought her food and water and she just sat there and never moved for two years. Okay, so I'm going to call Danny in to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, get up here and walk her through this. Okay, so I'm going to YouTube. You sure you have share audio checked when you share screen deck? Yes. Uh can I escort me out? If you're under 18, thank you, and have a nice day. Huh? He said, can I escort me out? And I said, yes, oh. you can. If you're under 18, thank you, and have a nice day. <laughs> um, I don't know, but I, that's what they determined at least two, two years. But I don't know how they determined the timeline. No, this was because the skin grew over. I hate to say this. Oh, God. Her skin grew over the seat. Let's just put it that way. Or became fused to the seat. And that's what she had to have surgically removed. Oh, AR gave him a hand. He didn't need to walk on his own. <laughs> she carried him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least he was polite and said, "I can, can I escort me out?" So, hey, at least he was polite about it. Or she it was Skyla. I don't know. <laughs> what did you do to your hand? Did you have to shake it? It's cramping up. It's oh, just it's doing the doing its st stinking thing. I okay. thought that I was meant to be a you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to share, audio, <laughs> share, to share audio, share a tab screen instead. So, do I need to open it from Windows? It used to let me go in this way. Yeah, she's using Chrome, Brandon. And I've never done any of this, so I can't help her. I'm useless tonight. <gasps> okay, I guess I'm going to find YouTube through. A browser tab and go in that way and see what happens. Why am I typing in Chrome? 
<laughs> I don't know why are you typing in Chrome. I did fall asleep once on the, the commode when I was pregnant with my son and almost fell off. Where is that? And the only reason I woke up is because um, my husband came in and said, How long have you been in here? <laughs> that won't work. It's trying to make me. Oh, add, maybe if I add a tab. Do? Duh. Duh. Add it, take it away, bring it in, take it out. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to just get on my phone to watch comments. Brandon said, open the tab, then share the tab. And then he said, yes. So. Okay. I'm, I think I'm, my brain might be getting it. Hold on. It's a spinning. Your brain or the tab? <laughs> the tab. Okay. Uh, that. Uh, that YouTube. Okay. Er, no, keep going back. Go back. <coughs> Sweet. Where is Restream? Where are you at? Right here, live. Ha ha. Hold on, I'm coming. I think I got it figured out. Oh yeah. Bang. Ha. See you. She scares me when she's happy. Her evil laugh comes out. <laughs> oh. Okay, so let me come. Oh, it is showing it. Okay, so we are watching Sweetie Paolo. The, um, her Lauren. Name is Lauren. Lauren, yeah. And I, we're, we're not supposed to drop links in the chat, or I would, but I'll, I'll share it on my community once here in just a little bit. Okay. Let me go. I don't want y'all to have to read her chat. That's not our business. I'm going to mute while this plays so if I sneeze or cough, I don't interrupt anybody. Okay, you're okay. Buddy, depending on where you are around the world, it's bright and, hurt, bright and early here where I'm at in Arizona. And I wanted to go over some of the stuff I've been hearing, seeing, you know, finding on the internet about whether it's the search, the drama around the search, there's been some developments like with the, the drama between, I think the grandmother, so Seth Rogers' mom and the Proudfoots. Yeah. There was somebody who came out who said that the story that was told on the live stream recently, you know, the Smiley Story live stream, where the Proudfoots were interviewed for, <clears throat> excuse me, about three plus hours, that the story about the snakes wasn't altogether Thank you for exactly what, what they had said. So I just wanted to go over some of those uh, details. I thought they were, at the very least, kind of, um, I don't know, sort of surprising, honestly. When you're in a position where you've got to give your side of the story like the Proudfoots did recently in their in their interview and they were asked questions really without any you know there there were no borders no boundaries to these questions a lot of them and so i i was kind of surprised that some of the questions were kind of bs you know uh, excuse me some of the answers were kind of bs hey to everybody in chat thank you so much for being here i know it's early well, for a lot of you, it's early. So let's first start off with the search yesterday. I'll let you know Let about you that. Know and I'm sure you already, you've heard quite a bit as it is, but we'll go over it and then we'll get into the other stuff. She's going to go over the search with y'all from yesterday. Uh, May, or was, yeah, it was yesterday's search. <coughs> All right, so volunteers join Sebastian Rogers' dad for a search in Hendersonville. It's been nearly a month oh my gosh. since 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers disappeared from his Henderson home, leaving authorities and community members with questions and concerns. Authorities believe that the autistic teen wandered off with a flashlight and no shoes. Despite the passage of time, the search for Sebastian remains relentless, with community members rallying alongside Sebastian's father in unwavering support. So what they did yesterday is a bunch of people, uh, volunteers, 
I think JLR, yeah, JLR was there. Um, well, somebody, I think even some local news crews and stuff captured the event, but it was at Rockland Recreation Area in Hendersonville, which from what I understand has been shut down due to a tornado that had ripped through there in December. Thank you. So what we saw, a lot of us were watching oh. as searchers were there yesterday. And what, what happened was it seemed that they, they came upon- Brandon, if this is Sweetie Palo. On something and the dogs actually reacted. Now I've heard it was one dog. I've heard it was six dogs. What, whatever that number is, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But I'm going to share with you the person who was right there, right there when the dog, I guess, reacted. You need to definitely see what she had to say because her account is. Um, it seemed promising. That's why I'm kind of surprised that it isn't. Um, so from what we understand right now. Now, the Cajun Navy also came out last night on, on Twitter, and they were making some very vague posts. One of them was like that, you know, it was a good day and that this, one of the, one of the comments in reply to their main post was like you know this is going to be a very sad search and cryptically if you re read between the lines it seems like you know did they maybe did they maybe find something but from what i understand today they're going to go out and search some more let me let me show you guys what the TikTok lady said this is one of the searchers all right I might need to refresh this. Hang on. I'm torn up, guys. I'm torn up. Um, I was just out here trying to help um, look for Sebastian Rogers um, out here in Hendersonville. We got a little team. There's 17 of us. We're looking. Um, I stop at this tree area. I'm like, what is this? I see a little piece of um, gauze with tape. It looks like band-aid, something. There's blood on it. Something doesn't feel right about it. I, you know, so we stop. Someone comes and looks at it. Um, somebody found a hey, Jamie. right by it, a big hole. Like it felt like fresh soil is what they said. So it looked like a big hole had just been dug up. Um, Thank you, Amy. So we stop and they get the canine dog. Um, the dog comes, when he gets to that area, he is, he lays down, he's barking and he starts digging. I don't know what those commands mean. Um, I'm gonna have to go Google it. But after that, she makes a call and next thing we know we're kicked out they're like oh the park is closed you know this is trespassing i stay back um i wait for the park ranger to get there i talk to him i'm like hey this is what's going on i found this piece of thing they're kicking people out you know what what do we need to do do i need to work it like what 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 happens um so i go and i talk to dad he's like drive back with me we'll go figure it out i go and i go talk to dad um who is Does her dad? More help right now? I don't know. It sounds like they're staying there to search. Does anybody um, know this area? I'm praying. I don't want to pause it. This family finds answers. Or... Go ahead. Does anybody know this area? Because I'm, I'm getting that it's a it's some kind of a park. Is that like a wilderness park? Like you hike through it or? <laughs> Park like I thought that's just like a park and rec center is what it looked like to me. Okay, because what my question is, I did listen to this when you sent it to me earlier, and and this just bothered me a little bit because she kept saying I talked to my dad, and I'm like, well, who the hell is your dad? Or what maybe he was um, with um, one of the searchers. Well, I know one of the main searchers, maybe. 
Well, but I'm saying I'm getting that vibe where like, she's like, well, do I work this or do, you know, and it's like, well, what do you mean? Do you work it to me when you're out searching, you call them over and then like this, they'll say, okay, you guys step back and Ellie or whoever will step in to finish investigating the spot. But she's like, well, do I, do I do this? Do I? And I'm like, what? No, you're not going to go digging and all that. That's their. Okay. Anyway. Okay, something sm okay, I see what you're saying. Well, here's my thought. You might find some bandages with blood on it, but if it's a spot where people maybe who are homeless travel through or maybe a hiker, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's there. Do you, do you following what I'm saying? Yeah, it could it could also um be other people, somebody else besides him. Well, I mean we as well because we don't know how many people are missing from that town no we don't so oh thank you ar and um i don't think we will know and i don't know if law enforcement will ever put out and say what that was um that was found there because what happened was they got kicked out because it was t tvi or however you say it like official yeah. wildlife it was their property Okay. But today, the owner of the place let the searchers in. Well, and it was supposed to be closed because they got hit by a tornado recently, didn't they? Isn't that what she said in the beginning? Uh, I know they did get hit. I didn't. I don't know if it was recently. I'm not sure. I say it was probably the or last tornado. Been closed since the last tornado went. The yeah. last storm went through. So it has not been open to the public since that storm went through. Okay, so but... it would be odd that if they didn't want that open and then the landowner comes in and says, well, I'm just going to open it. You know, he should have probably, and what would they have to do with it if it's privately owned? See, that confuses me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'm really not sure how all that works there. I don't know. Uh -huh. And I, I didn't want to interrupt. It's just I kept hearing this. And when I listened to it earlier, that was something that came in my mind to put forth and ask what you guys thought. Because that's what I first thought I'm thinking is, well, first of all, who's your dad? And what do you mean? Do I go in and do I do this? So it's like, I'm no, my understanding is when you're searching, if you find something, you call them over, they put a marker down and they may ask you to back that, you know, take steps backwards and leave the area so they can scan it properly. But I, everyone, every search is different, I guess. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think a lot of searches are different. And this, <coughs> like this search was held by the Cajun Navy. I thought they were told to step back. They weren't doing it today or yesterday. They well, were told to step back and they said, okay, they wanted them to wait 24 hours. From what I understand, they were the one that held the search. Well, she says it in this video. The lady that you, that, that Lauren. She says that they were asked to wait 24 hours. They didn't go in and search yet. I thought it was wait 24 hours. I don't, I'll have to re-listen to that. Well, I, I, well, go ahead. I didn't interrupt, but I, I know <laughs> no, that I okay. remember hearing it because I thought it was odd. Why would you tell K, K, you know, the Cajun Navy to wait? I mean, don't you want to find this person? Why would you tell them to wait? But go ahead. I just, okay, so I'm taking notes it. because with some of your questions, I'm going to look it up. Yep. Yeah, they searched today, but see, this was from yesterday. This isn't so who held yet. that search yesterday because I thought it was them. No, like, from, I don't like, know, I was watching on like the live search and I thought it was the Cajun oh. Navy, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so she should say it in here after this lady that the Cajun Navy was asked to wait 24 hours or something. Okay, let's but see. I'll shut up. You go ahead and. or um, Sebastian out here safe somewhere. And I'm just, I don't know, that was something. I'm so um, shook. I got my master's in early childhood education at Arizona State University's program online. I was just really inspired. Sorry about Guys, that. I was shaken too when I saw that yesterday. Who was watching that live during, you know, as the search was going on? It was just. And then you hear a person say something about okay. tape. I think it was gauze, tape, and diaper. 
and maybe blood as well was one of the words that were used. I was like, oh my gosh, I think maybe they found him. It was like kind of close to some railroad tracks um, in this foresty spot, you know, covered trees, leaves, everything everywhere. And it just seemed like, wow, that's kind of a likely place that somebody would put, you know, a person they're trying to hide. Not to mention it had been shut down since December. So if you're going to put somebody in a place, you're going to put them where there's, the public isn't going to really be. Now, there's a lot of controversy at the moment because people are saying that there has been an issue, uh, order issued to the Cajun Navy to stand down for seven days. I'm not sure if you guys have been hearing this or not. I don't for sure wow. know if it's valid or not. Part of me thinks it's not 100% legit because I know that they're going out to search today. But is it that the Cajun Navy is not and volunteers are? Um, not sure. Maybe you guys know more about that at this point. But it's uh, it's really bizarre, you know. And and I know people are getting really upset about the nitpicking of of Katie and Chris Proudfoot at this time. But guys, it's it's really hard to not see this from the perspective of being a parent. If you're a parent, you know how you're supposed to act. When I think about my daughters or my son missing and how I might react to that, like I, I actually can hardly even imagine it because it's just the scariest thing on earth. So to see individuals that don't seem as freaked out as maybe we would be that's what seems so wrong with this picture right it, it's it's not that we're trying to be hard it's like it, are they acting right is this normal to act like that i don't, I don't think know. it is i don't know i think if you're if you have a missing kid you're gonna stop at nothing like blood, sweat, and tears, you're going to be looking everywhere you can look. And no that doesn't, that just wouldn't stop. I don't even know if going. darkness would going. make me stop. I would just want my baby back. What, Peggy? I said, and you don't have a right to judge another parent because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what Ellie told them to do and not do. And that's not right. I'm, I, that's, I'm sorry. You, you cannot judge another parent because you don't know what's going on in that house. She could be, they could be putting her on stuff to keep her sedated, for God's sake. Is she sitting here yeah. judging? I don't think that's right. You never judge, never judge. Hi. Hi, DM. Uh, hope you're 18 or over. Back. And all I would think about, I think, is is what's being done to them right this minute. It would be the most traumatizing worry on this earth if I picture what it would be like to have a missing child. So yeah, that, that's why they're coming under such criticism. And, and guys, I know that we're, you know, a lot of us get really sensitive about this issue. Yes, they are not quote suspects at this time. And I feel that I have given more than enough balanced information. And if you haven't watched any of my videos before, I've talked to people who know the details, okay? And I had a person tell me that every single thing that Katie Proudfoot has said is exactly what showed on her surveillance. Uh, and what I mean by what she said is every detailed event that she's gone over in her interviews is exactly what happened according to the data uh, though she hasn't talked about a couple things um, they're not that significant anyway and, and the person was actually surprised that she had never even brought these particular things up one of them was like driving around the neighborhood maybe by now she has talked about that uh what was the other one there was one other oh and running outside to uh, in the morning when she discovered that sebastian was not in his room that she runs outside and she's getting the neighbor's attention and, and freaking out saying, where's, I don't know where my son is. I don't know where Sebastian is. So those are the two things she actually didn't talk about till maybe just recently, actually. So yeah, 
person told me everything she said is, has totally been legit. But as you know, and as I've said previously, if a person wanted to do something in a nefarious way, right, take take somebody out of an equation with careful planning, with careful uh, orchestrating, they could do just about anything as long as you can make your the, the setting itself where the person goes missing, keep it as status quo as possible, right? In this case, a garage light was left on all night. That's what I was told. The garage light was left on all night. Uh, the boys, Sebastian's light went off at 908. Her light, her bedroom light went off at 1145. Living room light went off at around that same time. Sorry, guys, my voice is not good. <clears throat> Uh, I was told that every single wind. What is it? Hey. Okay. Window had screens on it because that was my first thought was like, well, could he have gone through a window? She said, no. No, that's what I was thinking too. Um, there were screens on the bottom and top windows. There, uh, let's see, there was one door. She mentioned one door that was left open that you could see on the surveillance. I wish I would have probed her more about that. That's a regret of mine. But needless to say, um, everything seemed, from from this person's perspective, she was in great defense of 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 mom because she's like you know she didn't do anything i don't think she did anything i've looked for it i've gone to the surveillance when i hear my neighbors talking about this and that she's like i've looked for it i can't find it i don't see it i don't see anything she did and another thing she said was that uh, from the very beginning of february yes, that chris proudfoot was not home at all that he didn't come home until the afternoon of the 26th which was the day that sebastian vanished um yeah technically yeah the day that he vanished it's just it's really something guys so i just wanted to go over some of those details real quick let's get back into the crazy though i don't want to skip that because Thank it's you, all Jen. cage is alive you took my son we gotta get that baby back you won't ever stop no. me it's all just nuts. Absolutely nuts. All right. I'm sure a lot of you guys, oh my goodness. A lot of you guys have seen that smiley story. Right, drunk, interview. right. I'm going to read you this post. And then I'm going to play the part. That That is true. Nobody knows. Actually, you know what? I'm going to play the part of this interview and then read the That's story How about that. So you can yeah. really see the difference as far as what was said and what the truth is allegedly. Just a minute. Is it this one? Yeah, here it is. Okay. Okay, okay. we put it on. It right Remind here. me when we get to the snake thing, I go. have a question for you. And if you haven't okay. seen this, boy, you're missing out. It's pretty wild. Okay, just a minute. Let's I just felt some kind of type of way because it's the way you answered it and you already had in your private private messages. But but none of that matters. What what matters is Sebastian. And I want to know, tell me, Chris, can you tell me about the snake? Tell me about this. What is it, Peg? After they talk about this snake, remind me that I want to point something out that I think they push. And I don't like the fact that they push it. But go okay. ahead and play the thing about the snake. Oh, the snake. Uh -huh. The snake. Why did you get rid of the snake? Or y'all got or decided together? Or, or tell me about the snake. I okay, so right. So to, to answer your question about the snakes, we, well, I'll start at the beginning of the snakes. So I've you long time ago i actually used to breed reptiles snakes cargo reptile all kinds of stuff you name it just about reptiles i used to breed it love reptiles one of my favorite things 
Mm -hmm. uh, in California, we actually had a snake. Um, they had a bearded dragon. It died. Mm -hmm. um, but we wound up getting a snake. Well, Sebastian liked it. They is me and Bubba. We had a beardy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Um, but we had a salmon team bowler. Uh, Sebastian liked the idea of having a snake. Well, oh, he loved that thing. He he's never had one that was his snake, his own snake. Mm -hmm. Um, now mind you, when I do something, I go all in. I just I don't half-ass do it. So. <clears throat> you know, I bought, purchased, however, I've got friends that are in the world still that are in that business and we all chit chat and, um, and, uh, I wind up coming across, basically I had like about 30 snakes at one given time. Um, all of them were ball pythons. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any, I didn't have anything retic i didn't have anything massive poisonous or anything like that well sebastian was infatuated with one of the snakes that one of the breeders i deal with have and it's the picture that the snake that you see in the picture that's wrapped around his arm that yeah. is his personal pastel ball python named brownie that is his personal snake he loved them um the downside, like it got to a point with work, with mom's work, my work, and I told Sebastian, I said, you know, having a snake, snake means responsibilities. Mm -hmm. You're going to clean it. You're going to have to feed it. You're going to water it. You're going to do all that stuff. And if he actually you don't, did. He what, Katie? I said, and he did for a little while. And then he stopped? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and. Parenting is, and, and I think everybody understands this. When you're a parent, you're not just your, your kid's best friends. You're not. That's not what your job is. Your job is to be a parent. And I told Sebastian, if you don't, yeah, drunk, she's gone. And he thought I was kidding. Nope. So when I got rid of one, I got rid of them all. Now. When I say got rid of them, a friend of mine, local in Nashville, he got them because he's a good breeder, great guy. And he's like, if you ever want them, come get them, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, man, appreciate it. But right now, he's not he's not doing what he's supposed to do. So right now, we're not going to just hang tight with him. So we got rid of the snakes. So did um, his dad not want them or you couldn't take them to his dad's or anything so he could see them when they're there? I just wonder. No, well, <laughs> well, his dad was going to take 30 snakes. I mean, because you know, 30 snakes, you're talking a big old rack, um, all kinds of stuff. I mean, in, you want your question yet? You've got to deal with the food, which is going to be rats and things like that. Well, people, yeah, I, I can people, point out that people don't want to deal with that. What is it? What I want to point out is that he said he's had about 30 snakes. And he said he had them. In, in, the way he words it is, it's like they had the snake in, the snakes in California. Now, I know they're not in California, so I'm assuming they brought this snake with them. <clears throat> And like he said, between his work and his mother's work, they didn't feel the snake was going to be cared for properly. Now, you can you can say to your child, "Hey, okay, we'll keep the dog if you feed it, walk it, and and water it every day." But if the kid doesn't do that, then and you can't do it, the responsible thing to do is to rehome the snake. That now, snake was his best friend. That was yeah, that it, best friend, and they took it, it away. But if you're not taking care of it, that snake's going to suffer because it's not eating. Well, that's when you step up and you help your child take care of it. But that's what I'm saying. They said they would be at work and everything. They couldn't do it. Well, they themselves. ain't at work 24 seven. It ain't that damn hard. Well, I'm I'm sorry. I I don't. I think that if you have an arrangement and the child does, I mean, 
I've seen my grandparent, my grandkids back away from feeding their, their responsibilities. And then my daughter's coming home at 11 o'clock going, did anybody remember to feed the dogs? And they all go, uh, oh, and she's running out at 12 o'clock at night to feed damn dogs because they didn't do it. So if you're, if you can't take care of an animal and I'll be honest, they had one die because it was dehydrated because none of the fools gave it water. That's why if you don't, if you get your child a pet, that's also going to be your responsibility because you, your child don't know how to take care of their self yet. Well, yes, so, I am. But if, if it's not being taken care, care of, then you rehome it. Time. That's your job as a parent to help them, in my opinion. I well, mean, yes, that's it is. But if, if it's not being done, then you rehome it. And there's going to come something that that woman, that Lauren is going to she's going to play you something that talks about the snake and the person that let him have that snake had an agreement that that snake would come back to them so just keep watching there's a little bit more behind that snake story than what they're saying oh hold on okay hold on i'll, I'll talk when we get to that part okay <laughs> I love that we have different opinions. Yeah, yeah Danny. I see, love wait, it. Before you do that, Danny said, so I think people are hung up <laughs> on him being autistic and being given too much responsibility with a disability. I don't think yes. this young man has been given anything that was too much. What I think is that people are trying to say, oh, poor him, because any other parent, I had a rabbit. My dad gave the rabbit back to somebody because I didn't take care of it. I had a hamster that I took care of and then found out years later the reason my hamster died is my mother starved it because it killed my sister's hamster because <laughs> it was being territorial. <laughs> and my mother got mad at my hamster and when I left the school, she starved my damn hamster. So what I think they're doing is because he's autistic, they're trying to say, oh, poor... St oh my God, I'm so mad I can't think. Poor Stefan. Oh, he, he was just a, oh, so, yeah, thank you, Sebastian. He 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 was just a little autistic little boy. Why why would anybody they're they're using the label wrong? And that that makes me mad too, but can can continue. Okay. Okay. I'm continuing. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a question. I mean, I know I wouldn't. It's just a question. It was a question because I wondered, like, you know, I, I could tell in the picture he really liked it. Um, so that was one of his, you know, pets. And so I just wondered. Um, I mean, like, to this day, I can I call my buddy. Mm -hmm. You know, if Sebastian wants to go, I can call him up. We'll head over to his snake, his uh, his big old snake. He's got a building full of them and that's where ours are and yeah. he's like you want to see him just come on over man whenever you call me up cool yeah i mean so i mean it, it's it wasn't like he would never get to see it again it was just <laughs> right lessons yeah. lessons yeah. have to be taught i'm a very firm believer you know it is what it is you know is it always gone forever no not necessarily but you're going to earn it back it's not just going to be handed to you how did you discipline him Sorry, with, since he, you know, how, how did you discipline him? Sebastian in general? Yeah. Well, that Tuka depends. Tuka, are you 18? The I don't crime, know how The to punishment say. has to fit the crime. Okay, Tuka sounds so better. So to speak. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. Cleaning his room. Okay. Mm -hmm. And people are going to sound make me sound like I'm so horrible. But I promise you, folks, you try this with your kids one time and you won't ever have a problem with this again. So if you tell them to clean their room and they go in there and they clean their room, well, they say, come out, well, it's clean. And you go in there and you go to check their room and the room's not clean. Okay. Thought I told you to clean this room. Recordings just got better. Hey, it's Dana from StreamYard. I'm so excited to announce that local. Sorry, Al. Uh, uh, you told us the room is clean, did you not? Well, yes, sir. Okay. Now I'm going to clean your room. 
And you know exactly what that means. I go in and I go grab a trash bag. I walk back in that bedroom. If it's on the floor and it's not supposed to be on the floor, it's not picked up. What is it, Peg? You're muted. I forgot. <laughs> ah, see, I'm trying to keep my mouth shut and that's what happened. I said, I, I, I admit, I for one, I have done that twice, twice to my daughter because she didn't learn the first time. So carry on. Oh, I've thrown away my kids' stuff. Oh, but yeah. they they just throw it in the floor and they don't even touch it. Like, what what are you doing? Yep. Picked up and put in the right places. Goes in the trash bag. If it's not important enough for you to take care of and pick up, I'll take care of it for you. Go in the trash bag. Tie it up. I've done this to him I've twice. Done. One time, mom talked me out of it. You guys. He's such a Billy badass, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there flexing his muscles. Yeah, I'm going to show that kid. It's unbelievable. Yes, he's cold. He's cold as ice. I just said we've done it. Where is he? He's, cold he's worried stuff? about he being. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> right. That he's not being smart. It's not how you teach your kids exactly. <sighs> All right. So let's I get to the to post admit, real quick. This is just nuts. I've, I've went in after telling my kids over and over and over and over again. And I tell them if. I have to go in there and clean your room. Whatever's in that floor is going in the trash. I mean, they didn't mess with it anyway. And I don't care. So, okay, I would go in there and I would clean out their room. Now, I ain't going to lie. There was some things that didn't go in the trash. Oh, because... yeah, you put the expensive stuff and you hide it until later. But, yeah, hi, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, but, like, I have, if I have to clean my, it still, my... It, my Otis upstairs. Guess Mama's about to go get a hold of that room. Ooh, hello. Run now. Here's a question. This lady, Lauren, said if my daughter went missing, okay, I would move heaven and earth. Yada 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 yada. Well, she, yeah, she said this is my how I feel like I might act. Okay, so here's my question. I'm betting. Anybody want to take a bet with me? Because I don't know how we're going to find out about it, but I'm betting. I'm betting she is a single no. mom. Raising an older girl, they've reached this point in their life, and she's sitting back judging somebody else. I don't want to get in the middle of it, but your mom said that she can book you any day of the week and take whatever she wants. Let me shut my door. He's trying to get a, her going. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. Amy, no, they don't. And how I can't, well, I don't know how if I can explain this. Um, no, because sometimes, some oh, how do I do it? A lot of times, when you, when you, when I like, when you go to deal, well, and maybe somebody else I know, I think AR or was it Angel said they, they also have an autistic family member. Um, they don't really. Respond the same way as as a normal. Well, I hate that word. As another child would, I'll say it that way. As another child would, um, for example, um, my son had a friend that used to come over, and they would eat pizza and drink soda and play their games in his bedroom. And the kid would go home, and I'd go in, and there's this, oh, like the room exploded. And one day I said to him, "Honey." Please go in and get the soda cans that have soda in them and put it in the sink for me. And he, he did. And then I said to him, okay, now take this trash bag because you got to tell them one step at a time or they get overwhelmed. I said, please take this trash bag into your room, get the rest of the cans and the, the pizza plates. And he got so upset that I asked him to go in and clean his room that he made himself cry so hard he had an asthma attack and my husband was mad at me and i said what did i do all i asked him to do was go put that stuff in the bag he didn't have to clean the whole room just put the stuff in the bag 
and he lost it. So I learned from that day on that he had to be given tiny little things to do. And if he finished them, of course, I always praised him, but then I had to take him to the next step. And then I had to wait. And so, yes, kids can can respond differently. And unless it had something to do at that time with Pokemon, he he would have been mad at me if I put Pokemon in a trash can, but in a trash bag. But anything else, he would have been, okay, so I can't have it anymore. Okay. And he would just kind of move on. But. Each one is different, and that and that's why I mean they are unique children. Yeah, and and I hate hearing everybody trying to lump anybody with this under one little, because they're individuals just like we are. And I don't know how this young man responded. I don't know if he really needed to be pushed or guided. Um, I don't know. We're talking about a case. Oh. What you need, powder balls? I'm just trying to stay out of stuff, you know. Oh, well, grab a chair and sit with us then. Okay, y'all ready for me to play? Yeah, I'll shut up. Go ahead. Welcome back. There's so much I can say about this interview. She did a fantastic job, by the way. I just want to say, Smiley Story, you did so good. So, so good. Uh, And and you know what? I want to address one more thing about the interview after i read this post to you I'm so sorry. we'll i'm gonna it's a, come back to that in a minute somebody, uh, well, yeah, I earlier, right, okay. we'll see you soon Bye, meal. you got a question peggy okay so face your eyes on this here we go so remember how proudfoot chris proudfoot said you know we had they had a bearded dragon the dragon the bearded dragon died um that he ended up buying 30 snakes that they were all ball pythons and when he when he does something he goes all he goes big right go big go home that kind of thing and that he said he kind of kept it open that you know if sebastian was going to take care of it maybe we could talk in the future about getting the getting the snake back brownie by the way is the snake's name Well, that's not exactly what this person said. And I'm not trying to be nitpicky, okay? But the truth is the truth. And I believe this person is is probably telling telling the truth. So so this person says, I can confirm. I'll zoom in so hopefully you guys can see this better. um, Hang on. There's, (laughs) There's no way to get this. Hold on. Maybe if I go like that. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how to zoom this in, guys. Sorry. Okay, I can confirm. We do still have Sebastian's snake brownie, and she is well taken care of. I'm holding out hope to be able to return her to Sebastian. Make sure you guys can hear me. Okay, good. Holding out hope to return her to Sebastian. Um, ETA, I feel like it's important to make it clear that there was never a conversation between Christopher Proudfoot, my husband, about them getting the snakes back. This is a business. And Chris Proudfoot knew that many of his snakes would be listed to be sold where my husband would be getting those profits. This also happened back in August. Not once was my husband asked to hold on to Sebastian's snake so that he could get him back someday. Not once. The only reason my husband knew that this snake was special to Sebastian is because he himself told him. And my husband said, well, why don't you keep this one? He said, Sebastian looked at Katie and she told him no. Never once have they reached out on Sebastian's behalf for a visit to see the snake or for a picture or update at all. Uh, that kind of yanked at my heartstrings because you know how much your kids love their animals, right? My daughter with my cat. Just absolutely that love, that excitement to see them. And then for that animal, that loved one to just be ripped away, I, especially for a, a special needs kid, I, I feel that that's extra insensitive. I'm sure a lot of you can agree. 
It's that's it's just really not it's not right. And he doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to phase him that he's like this, that he's just a certified asshole. <laughs> Sorry, I I don't know what else I don't know how else to describe him. He's a Billy Badass certified asshole. What she's like the other one? She's just like the other one. She has made up her mind and she is not going to be convinced. She is going to sell him. I mean, you could think he's a certified asshole and not think that he done anything. Because he is a certified asshole. <laughs> then my dad was a certified asshole. My husband was a certified asshole. Kenny's a certified asshole. Well, all right, then. I don't judge your husband. I don't judge <laughs> Danny's husband or Amy. Well, I don't. Yeah, Amy's husband or any. I wouldn't do that. And this woman is a bitter divorcee who doesn't like men. No, she Plain has a husband. <laughs> Ugh, I'm throwing in the towel. I, I love, in, I love I, how she talks about, like, it, like brings it all. I don't know. I just in, think she talks. She talks like really well, like about it, and I don't know. Well, I I will all, I will also say this. She may talk pretty. She may talk pretty. But let me put you to the to, to another point I want to make. All this stuff is somebody's told me, somebody's told me, somebody sent me, somebody did she do any research on her own? No. Has she reached out and talked to these people? No. So how dare you come on in front of I don't know how many subs she's got. And people that stop being like, a lot. <laughs> well, and, I think it's a lot to oh. me. It's yes, a lot Mr. to me. J, I, I, I sorry, like yes, Sweetie Pilo. My mother starved my hamster. And I wish I hadn't told the story, but I wanted to make a point. I, I like Sweetie Pilo. I, I've always liked Sweetie Pilo. I, I, I just find that if you're going to do this, you have to not go in with a prejudged mental image of what you want this outcome to be just like you and i have said i'm on the fence i don't know if they did anything to this poor young man god i hope not and i go by what i saw with the mom in her interview and what i witnessed and what i heard from the dad and then we talked about the dad's interview and little things we picked up from the real biological dad yeah but i will agree there's things um that i have heard like the biological dad say i just don't agree with um i don't i just i don't agree with the man comment but i'm not i'm gonna go back and listen to that whole interview i haven't yet i've tried to find a good interview but uh, it, it it does it just makes me so mad and and the fact that she opened this damn thing with, well, JLR was down there. Anybody that backs JLR needs to get in a truck. Hey, I watch JLR. Car. No, don't you dare. I do. Don't I love you. JLR. Oh, I'm dead. I'm done. Oh. <laughs> you just broke my widow heart. And I had a very widow heart left. <laughs> I mean, he's out there, and I can see the things with my own eyes. And but he doesn't get the whole story. And he, ha but he's not. He has people go to their houses, and he has no idea what he's done to these people. Him <laughs> and Blowhorn Betty, and and he's not even with her no more. He went on by himself because he knew he had to. Because she's getting sued after he told her to sue somebody. But that's the point. He ran Temple, got her involved in this stupid lawsuit, and split. But that, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm yelling, and I don't mean to yell. But he has, in the last two cases he's covered, he has gone up to people's house and looked in the window. He, he stalked this person all the way to, to work. I'm sorry. You don't do that. You don't stand out somebody's house and say, baby killer, baby killer lives there. You don't stand outside of a young man's house and yell, where's Gabby? What'd you guys do with Gabby? You don't do that. Hey, I would have. Oh. Well, I could say I would have, but they should have just went in there and dragged the fucking Brian or whatever dude's ass, Gabby's ex. They should have dragged his ass Brian. out of the house. 
Well, no, they kept letting him hide. They, and then, uh, that one, that one's mother. I wanted to slap. You know, she worked for the FBI at one point, and she was hiding her damn kid and giving him money so he could stay on the lam. Enough said. But anyway, and I still personally, you don't believe that was his head out there in the land. I think it was a decoy. <coughs> what? I don't think they found. I don't think they found him out there. I think it was a decoy. Well then, we all heard that. And J J O R is, is he he is a the group that other people call tragedy pimps. They I make their money he's... off these cases. And end end of. I can't. I will never ever ever back that man or Blowhorn Betty or Olivia Chronicles. None of them. They're all in it for this. They want this. And they grab whatever case is hot right now. They forget about all the other cases. They want that hot case because the viewers come in and give them money. Oh, well. Mm -mm. Well, that's mm -mm. that don't mean I can't like what they're putting out. Well, I, I'm not saying you can't like them. I'm just saying. Well, I mean, I don't people. watch the other ones i did watch on chronicles of olivia i looked up a um video that she posted about the search but and they do no research they take word of mouth on people that they can't even vet well so i i'm sorry and i feel that, them in their conscience well and that's how i feel i think this lady and the last lady that we watched that tried to give us it's their opinion they're of one mindset. Yeah. They listen to other people and they've coming out. But for, for me, you don't have a right. I don't care who you are to sit here and judge the parents, either parent, the father or them. We can say, hey, this guy's got, you know, the dad, the biological dad. Ooh, wait a minute. You know, but I think sometimes some of these interviews we're seeing, they're playing out of con. They're not playing the whole thing. They're playing sections of it. Well, yeah, you're not yeah. getting the whole content. And they're giving us the content they want us to hear. I'm sorry. I I enjoy this one. She's nicely spoken yeah, and everything, sure. but and then I think that just sets people up to be mad at somebody and somebody's gonna get hurt. One of these days, somebody's gonna get hurt, and you're gonna find out that person was innocent as hell, and there something's happened to them and it can't be reversed. Okay. That's my biggest fear is that some, somebody is going to get hurt because of this stuff. And from what I've heard, just an FYI, I heard that uh, YouTube's trying to make sure that uh, these crime things go away. Oh. That they're not covered on YouTube. They're going to make it a TOS at some point because yeah. somebody's going to get hurt. And I think they know it. Yeah. But continue. I mean, you still have more to play and I've been running my mouth, so I'll be quiet. <laughs> Okay. Uh, not to be not to be silly or whatever about it, but I, you know, it's just it's ridiculous. All right, let's get into. Oh, I wanted to show you the other thing. Good. I'm glad I'm not going to forget about that. The other thing I wanted to show you on that interview. That's important to me. Okay. Was it about? Was it right here? Okay. Oh. We can't thank you enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, I tell everybody every day, look, I don't care who does it. If I see it, you know, you might see on my community page, everybody's shared a hundred billion times. I just want his name and face out there too. And right. whew, it's it's a lot I, I i seriously take i have a lot of passion for for these cases the ones that i choose to do um i i really do i'm not big i'm not spent i grew up i was born and raised right there in nashville i have family right down from y'all um and i have a teacher over at beach high school and you know i it, it means a lot to me this case right here and it touches my heart for so many different reasons. And, um, I, you know, I, I, it makes me want to cry right now. It, it does. It, you know, you have a beautiful son and a handsome son, um, a stepson, son, whatever you want to call it, Katie. 
and um you know I, 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 it breaks my heart it does i can't tell you I'm, I'm nobody special i just get on here and i know how to use my mouth and i think and i think outside the box and i will keep his name and everything out well um, <clears throat> if you don't mind me uh so I don't know how to say this any other way, and I please forgive me because it's going to sound very jerkish. Say it. Say well, it. It's going to sound very jerkish, but I don't want softball questions. People wanted to ask me the hard questions. By golly, let's get these hard questions out. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. but I just. Well, uh, ha, let me start. Okay, ha, have you ever had CPS called on you before? Listen. Yes. Okay. Okay, and you don't have to go into it elaborate or anything like that. I, I just, that was the question that I had. Um, and that happens, you know, sometimes, especially when you have a um, child who is, you know, has special needs and stuff. That's hard. I've had it, well, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've, I've had CPS called on me in two states. Hmm. This is why I stopped shopping Second. on Amazon, and you should too. Don't spend another dime on Amazon. Mm -hmm. New Mexico and Tennessee. And so had so and that did that include with Sebastian? Tennessee was Sebastian, yes, ma'am. Okay. In fact, Sebastian here, I'll just like I said, I got nothing to hide. So Sebastian went to school one day because he we were at the house, he got in trouble, he didn't have a belt on. I was like, Where's your belt? And he got it. Whack. Kind of got him. So he goes to school and he tells the teacher. They're mandatory reporters. So the teacher reports it. Mm -hmm. That afternoon, CPS shows up to the house while we're actually sitting down to eat dinner. Now, mind you, 15-year-old child, he's not real happy because he's in trouble, so he's being punished. So he shows, you know, he makes a report. They come to the house, and the lady who comes to the house is the same lady we've had. In, uh, she's had a case before. Yeah. Um, huh. Now... The case that it was before was something that didn't even didn't even happen, and it's like three stories that was shoved into one. And when they finally got it debunked, they were like, "Oh, he's just he just he got he got so mixed up in telling one story, hey, it mixed into three, and it caused a commotion." Well, that got they canceled that out. So the one on me, she shows up, and uh, I said, "Hey, how you doing?" It's her again. She's like, "Oh, hey." She goes, hey, I, I'm already, don't, she's like, don't tell me anything, but I'm going to tell you what I know happened. And I said, okay. She goes, boom, boom, boom. She told me exactly what happened. I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, oh, my God. I said, yes, ma'am. This, this is how it's been. Sebastian thought by telling on me, making it sound like I was so horrible. Oh, you cut out. You cut out just a minute. Yeah, that was supposedly the case before that. Did one. you guys hear that part where he goes, whack, got him. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but that I, I heard it again as I listened to it this morning. And I'm like, did he just really say whack, got him? How can you make yourself sound worse, dude? As a matter of fact, let's see if we can get back to that. I, I couldn't I couldn't believe that I heard it. Again, I'm not trying to make a what is it, a mile out of a molehill, but or no, a mountain out of a molehill. I'm not trying to make a mountain out of a molehill, but that was like, huh? What? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, right wait here. a minute, wait a minute. Okay, and on, I think, on, and I think yeah. outside the box. Hold on. And I will what? And if I'm not mistaken, some somebody help me. Isn't it? Don't we have somebody in the chat that does something similar with their job, or their job may know more about this kind of stuff? Well, I say whack all the time, so that's yeah. But, but you're I, gonna whack say it, but you've done it because he didn't have his belt on. You're gonna. Whack that child with the belt because he ain't got his belt on. How about me whack yeah, him upside his head? Well, I'm just well. First, first of all, let me. Okay, he did say <laughs> it. He didn't deny it. He said it. 
I personally do not use any objects on either one of my kids. If it, if this isn't enough, then I've got a problem. Because right? I grew up in a house with a belt, a hairbrush, and a wooden spoon. So I don't grab an object. I use what God gave me. And if that ain't enough, well, I'll find another way to deal with you. But, <laughs> but what I want to point out to you is if they were called, if CPS obviously was sent by the school, then there was a second call made. And they came out and investigated it. If anything was founded, he would have been removed from the home. Now, I also want to say that the father would have been informed. And if the father didn't remove that kid from the house, then I would have to say whatever whack, if he wants to use that term, didn't harm Sebastian. So and I only school and told his teachers it must have hurt him. My kid went to school, and one of her little friends told the teacher that my husband was messing with her. Do you know it took me a month and a half to get them convinced he was not touching my daughter? That she slept in the raw in her bedroom, and if he was touching her, would she have slept in the raw in her bedroom? So, yes, things happen. Yes, th things, oh, that you have to deal with. And my daughter dealt with, with, with DHR, or here it's Department of Human Resources, on her children. And it took us quite a while to show them that they were wrong. And the caseworker she got was a wicked witch from the West. And let's just say when everything was done. Love you, Carl. Bye, Carl. That lady didn't have a job. Because she, she did it all wrong. Carl's going to live at 10? Is that what time she's going to live? I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't catch. But that my whole thing right there, though, is if, if, they didn't, if they didn't take him away from that home, if that father didn't go, that stepfather didn't go to jail, hey, Macy. then I don't think he did anything to harm that child. What if it's one of those cases, though, that they didn't believe the child. That could, well, yeah, I mean, I, anything's possible. Right, but let, let's go back. Sebastian had a good relationship with his dad. Dad talked to Chris more than he talked to the mother because apparently they had a better understanding of each other. And the mother can be probably emotional or whatever. Or he just doesn't like her anymore. I don't know. But he and Chris had this communication if Sebastian's relationship with his father was that solid, any report made against that child, he would have had to have been notified. Would he have left that kid in the home with them if he was being harmed? I don't think so. That's true, too. I unless, don't think so. And if he was Sebastian was told he better not tell his dad. And let's say he goes home. Oh, hey, dad said, if you leave my house without your wallet, phone, and keys, you're in trouble with me, mister. He didn't tell us what he did to the kid, but that he was a man, and he had to have those three items on him every time he left his house. Now, so let's say Sebastian didn't wear his belt. Stepdaddy gives him a little whack with the belt. I almost guarantee there was communication with his real father, and the father knew about it. Do you hear him making a big deal about this? No. Well, that's because everybody's got different opinions. Maybe he does, did know about it. But I'm saying I cannot picture Sebastian not telling his dad if they were that close and had that kind of relationship. He would have told his dad, hey, Chris is hurting me and I don't like it, dad. Now, if he could go to school and be upset about something that took place between him and, his, and Chris, he could very well would tell his father. That's true, drunk. What if Sebastian didn't really tell the whole truth? About but they would have found. They would have found. They would have found out. He would have had bruises. There would have been marking. There would have been. The dad would have come flying in. I'm sorry because he even said that at one point when he had Sebastian, Sebastian had some bruises, and they were able to find out like they happened at school or whatever the hell the story was. It wasn't him being harmed at home. And if his dad even, I think, had an, a, a tinkling in his head 
that they were hurting his son. He'd have had him removed way before then. And again, I'm I'm just going on my experiences, things that I've dealt with, and I just don't. And and, and if their caseworkers are good, and the school I think caseworkers, a lot of them are shit. Well, I think a lot of them are shit too. But you know, if they did a true investigation, they talked to him, they talked to the school, they talked to the stepfather and mother. And they went back and they looked at everything. There were no marks on the kid. The kid sat there and he maybe his story changed when they're talking to him. Hell, sometimes my son can't get, tell you what his address is and he'll get it backwards. Well, not anymore, but he did. It, it would be slow down. You had it right the first time. When you do it. So, <laughs> my hubby's red. Mm -hmm. and said, I don't know how he can top that well drunk. <laughs> I think he's voice typing. I think he's talking and texting. I don't think he's actually typing it. We'll find out in a minute because I kept calling him out. But yeah, I, I'm so, like I said, I wish these people would do more in, investigating before they just slap it on the internet. I, I just don't think. I'm a kid who grew up physically abused. I went to school with a little hoe in my face and told the principal I failed because I didn't want my sister to go to foster care and they fell for what it. What was that? Drunk, I'm so, so sorry that that happened to you. I am so sorry. And that's true. There's kids out here that won't, they won't tell. They'll hide it and, you know. What? Okay, I'm going to push play. We'll keep his name and everything out. Well, um, <clears throat> if you don't mind me, uh, so I don't know how to say this any other way. And I, please forgive me because it's going to sound fine. Like Say it. Say well, it. It's going to sound very jerky. She's playing it again. I don't want softball questions. People wanted to ask me the hard questions. By golly, let's get these hard questions. Out. <laughs> Sorry, but I just. Well. Uh, let me start. Okay. H have you ever had CPS called on you before? Yes. Okay. Okay. And awesome. you don't have to go into it elaborate or anything like that. I, I just, that was the question that I had. Um, and that happens, you know, sometimes, especially when you have a um, child who is, you know, has special needs and stuff. That's hard. I've had it, well, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've, I've had CPS called on me in two states. Mm -hmm. New Which Mexico, states? Tennessee. Not and so, had, so, and that did that include with Sebastian? Tennessee was Sebastian, yes, ma'am. Okay. In fact, Sebastian here, I'll just like I said, I got nothing to hide. So Sebastian went to school one day because he, we were at the house, he got in trouble, he didn't have a belt on. I was like, "Where's your belt?" And got it, whack, kind of got him. So he goes to school and he tells the teacher, "They're mandatory reporters," so the teacher reports it. That afternoon, CPS shows up to the house while we're actually sitting down to eat dinner. Now, mind you, 15-year-old child. Yeah, whack got him. That's just so bizarre to me, guys. So if something is hap was happening with Sebastian, now he couldn't tell anyone because no one believed him. Unreal. Yeah, yeah, good point, Kim. Right. Oh, it's so troubling. Okay, let's go over some of these posts and then we'll get off uh, off of here and go see what's going on, guys. Thank you for being here with me, guys. I really, um, I'm so sad about this case. I hope he's found. Such a sweet 15-year-old boy and not a sign of him no, anywhere. How's this even possible? But, you know, it is. Look at Summer Wells. Still, almost three years later, nothing. She's right, yeah. Also, please, right now, while you're here, please hit that like button. Get it up to four or 500 likes at least, please. And I hate to say that, but I really need the help, guys. My videos are being suppressed for those. sure. Okay, let's go through some of these posts. All right, so Robin Rogers, who is the grandmother, she is the paternal grandmother of Sebastian. She got really upset. Was it yesterday, I think? 
Thank you for sharing. So she said, yet yeah, another lie exposed. CP has said on multiple interviews that he has left the door open for me to contact them. I will admit that I left a very emotional message on 316, her Facebook messenger, and tell her to the tell her to tell the truth. For the first time in, my, in her life, I did tell her that if anything has happened to my grandson, I would push death penalty. Penalty. Yesterday, I received the following from KP, Katie Proudfoot. Robin, please do not contact us again. Your messages have all been forwarded to law enforcement as well as the re this request for you to no longer contact us. Forward whatever you like, Katie. I am one very angry grandmother and you are not out looking for my grandson. I am not afraid of the Proudfoot family or the little man you are married to. <laughs> That's a good one. This country has something called freedom of speech. Look at it. So then there was another, there was some more chatter that was spoken of. And that was that, and, and this, I cannot say if this is 100%, Peter. but I'll share it anyway, because I know it's going around, mm -hmm. that supposedly, okay, so take this with a huge grain of salt. Supposedly, Katie and Chris, if this is even true, has threatened to sue Robin Rogers. And I believe it was because of, or excuse me, no, it was Seth Rogers because he was out kind of showing them up, making them look bad. Again, giant grain of salt, but it still was interesting. This wow. was a post that a family member had had made to the to Chris. I couldn't believe what she wrote, but I saw this. I want to share it with you. She said, where the F is Sebastian? You both know where he is. It's a damn shame. You never allowed that child to be himself. Just give it up. Everyone already knows it was you and Katie in the backyard. Allow his father to have closure. You both are going straight to hell for this. Turn yourselves in. You look stupid as hell. I was like, whoa, she really, she couldn't help herself. She's angry, you know? This is, a, I believe, a close family member or friend of the family on the paternal grandmother's side. Another person oh, Jesus. highlighted, and I hadn't noticed this, oh, I'm but sure these you. scratches on Chris Proudfoot's arms. Now, I, I oh. doubt those are anything, but when I looked close, I was kind of surprised because they're perfectly spaced out. Like the what, what looks like it could be almost fingernail like scratches. Oh, help me. Baby Jesus, help me. I don't know. Caught my attention, though. Oh, I'm sure it did. Okay, there was a couple other things. All right. And then and then so Robin Rogers, the grandmother of Sebastian, said this. The United Kitch uh oh Cajun, the United Cajun Navy was asked to stand down by the Sumner County Sheriff's Office. Remember, I told you at the beginning of this live stream there was speculation that they were asked to stand down. I still cannot say a hundred percent if that's true, but she is the one who put this out there. So she says, the United Cajun Navy was asked to stand down by the Sumner County Sheriff's Office. However, a number of them stayed to support Seth and to look for my grandson. We want to thank all the volunteers who are out there, boots on the ground looking for Sebastian. We could be threatened with lawsuits, but we are not going to be, we are not going to stop looking for him. We will find him. We will bring him home to his dad. Thank you again for everything that everyone is doing and all the prayers, all the words of support is immensely appreciated. Guys, I'm going to leave it there. I know that. Okay, y'all. Let's see here. I have to admit that if that were me and that was my ex-mother-in-law. Okay. My ex-mother-in-law. However, as a grandmother. Don't mess with my grandkids. So I'm saying as a wife. <laughs> Well, you as a widow, grandma. I would look at my ex-mother-in-law and go, but as a grandma, yeah, I'll tear you to pieces if you touch my grandkids. You yeah. think I'm mad about my kids? Come after one of my grandkids. And you've all seen my grandbabies come in here and love on me. And, and of course, I go like this because I'm being bombarded, but it's just a joke. But I'm just saying. I, and And... And something that we've also talked about, we, we haven't said anything yet in the chat or to the chat, 
we all know when there's a divorce, there's his story, her story, and somewhere in the middle is the truth. And there's a lot of baggage that goes on with this. So I just that's why I'm on the fence because I don't want to say this one didn't do it. I don't want to say that one didn't do it. But we also threw out the thing about, well, okay, the dad's supposed to take him, so why would they want to harm him? He's going to go live with dad. He's not going to be their problem. Not that he was. I'm just saying, let's put it, you know, dad's taking him, so why would you want to harm the kid? Because he's going to go live with dad. And we also said, we know, well, hey, dad could have said, wait, maybe I really don't want to do it. And he did something to the kid. You know, he could have pulled up outside the house and said, Hey, Sebastian, come on down. Dad, I'm, I'm out here. I want to talk to you a minute. And a kid could have came down, got in his car, and they could have drove off. So see what I'm saying? You can write a story that way, too. I just... Everybody knows my my opinion on it. Because... Ow. Oh, that person... But, what? If I don't get it first, I'm going to scream, and I'm not. You because your pants? pants. Oh, well, that's cool. Welcome to the poopy pants. <laughs> okay. Carry on. Um, <laughs> um, right, Danny? It's, it is. It is. That's why I'm on the fence. But I love that, that Nikki looks at me and says, Peggy? <laughs> and I go, <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> and then she says something, and I go, "Well, that okay? I could see that. Like, what was it? Oh, you said that they walked him down to the to to the construction site." And yeah. I said, "Okay, but let, let me let me see. If you look out your window and you see a kid walking down the street, you think, oh, he's going home. He's going to visit a friend, and you go back about your business." Mm -hmm. But if you look out the same window and you see a man and a woman and they've got a kid between them and the kid's maybe dragging his feet, you're more apt to say, hey, are you guys okay? Do you need help? Is everything all right? Yeah, yeah, we got it. It's okay. It's okay. But now you've laid eyes on them. So you, if you hear, you know, this young man went missing, you say, wait a minute, those, that, there was a man and woman carrying a kid down the road. You're going to make that call. Yeah. Yeah, they went down this way on the road. And they had the kid between them. And maybe you see him come back and they don't got the kid. Or well, nobody okay. passed by him. But, or well, they went through the back. Or I don't know. It, can they it, get to that construction site from their backyard? I don't know. I don't know. And um, the whole thing is, what about these houses? Don't they have video cameras? And again, we don't know because nobody's telling us if they do or they don't. No, don't I think law enforcement has more information. Like Danny said. We don't have all the information that law, law enforcement does. I believe they have more information that is being said right now. Oh, I do sure believe that. Um, I, I still believe that there's some not good, so good parents in the situation. I still, maybe they didn't mean to, and it was an accident and it got covered up. You know, you some some something freaking happened, and that's just my opinion. Something well, happened. obviously something happened. We can't find well, this man. You know what I'm no, saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> damn it! Drink your damn water. <laughs> Are you yelling at me? I will anyway. Hang on. <laughs> so, what if they kill you? I just got here. Uh, well, sorry, dog, but. Then I'm gonna haunt you for my life. They are. They are. Whack a doodle. <laughs> Sorry, dog, but that's my line. Whack a doodle. You came in late. You get whacked. Whack a doodle. See, I said whack. You gonna hit? You gonna? You gonna call the the law on me? Because I sat here and said whack the dog. <laughs> they have to hold it for back, or when they solve mm -hmm. it, the ass. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, what is the famous saying? They are crossing their T's, dotting their I's. They're putting everything in place so that if one of them, and we say if one of them is involved, they can't wiggle out of it. I and y'all, um, I believe Carl is, um, I don't know, her community thing said she's going live at 10. Yeah. Oh, uh, I agree, Drunk. Drunk said, I don't know what type of area this happened. But I know the more populated an area, the less people call the police when they actually should. 
And damn it, Danny said, media has destroyed many a case. Yes, they have. And a lot of these, not you, not, not people in the chat, but idiots from social media have damaged many, many cases. Making false phone calls, putting out videos of, you know, oh, we found a water bottle. And then we found out they staged the water bottle. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Oh, she's live now? Yeah, it's under, it's under, I just commented. It's under videos under mine instead of lives for some reason, but maybe it's uh, pre-recorded. I think she mentioned about having a premiere, but I didn't know if that was live or if it was video. Yeah, it's live. She, she'll be able to be in chat. Oh. Well, I can't see it. I'm here with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ending y'all because uh, go to Carlotta's. It's under videos for me instead of live, so it might be that way with y'all just in case. Okay. Um, I love well, thank you for letting me yell. Thank, I love you. Thank you, and I appreciate we ha we all have our own different opinions about this. Um, me and Peggy have very different opinions about. Well, we this. still love each other. <laughs> yeah, but see, we're as adults. We're not sitting here with you. That's no hell. You better no. see it my way. Like I'm that. leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to show up at your door. No. <laughs> I Who love y'all. the room. I don't care. Love and you guys. I appreciate y'all. We'll talk more about this, um, which that was the ending. And I'm going to be looking for some other things. Of course, I asked permission before I share their live. But, okay. I love y'all. We're, we're late for Carl. Bye, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful night, and I will talk to y'all soon. Oh, shoot. I got work in the morning, don't I? Oh, no. Okay. Love y'all. Please hit the like button, too, please. Okay. Thank you. Come again. <laughs> love y'all.